Hello and welcome. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's Friday, end of our week. Weekend is coming and it was a short week. Isn't that nice to have that four day week? It was awesome. So let me know in the chat what kind of weekend plans you have. Hopefully you're enjoying the beginning. I know it's not summer yet, end of spring, but that beautiful weather. Interesting here in Northern Nevada. It is 95 degrees today, it was 97 yesterday, and tomorrow is going to be 61. So that's how it is here in Northern Nevada though. It never know what's gonna happen. We're going literally from 95 today to 61 tomorrow. Pretty normal though. So my name is Evelyn Knight, and I am the founder and CEO of Child Care Business Professionals. I'm also a Child Care Center owner. I'm actually at my center right now filming this. Um, so I have the experience. I'm here all the time. I know what it's like to be an owner and director. But at Child Care Business Professionals, we help child care business owners learn how to automate their systems. We help them find success in their center, and we also help owners take control of their lives again. Because a lot of times I talk to owners who most often their child care center runs them more than they run the center. So if you're one of those owners who's run, working like 10 plus hours a week or a day, then definitely your child care center is probably running you more than you're running your center. So that is one of the things I really specialize in is helping owners take control, get their systems in place, processes in place, and take control of their centers. Uh, and then of course I've done it myself. I have been an owner who didn't have the systems and processes, who was in a pretty chaotic system. I've learned how to accomplish just having the systems that make things flow nicely and smoothly. So that's something I really have a passion to help with. So just to recap the week, um, and oh, by the way, also, I do have a podcast, The Child Care Business Coach. So if you haven't heard it yet, check it out. Every week I put information out on the just different things to help you guys out, just to help be successful owners. So as you can see, I have an empty chair. My director, Brandy, is going to be uh, joining us in a couple minutes because today we're going to be talking about the importance of high quality research-based standards and why that is important to recession-proofing your child care center. So just to, again, quick recap of what we've covered this week. Our pillar number one was having that clear vision right, that drives you and that passion that you can make contagious so that your staff buys in and wants to work hard and wants to become a high quality center. The next pillar that we talked about was having an intentional culture within your center that is just the culture that you want and that branding that you want so that you can really control your reputation and make sure that your center's image is exactly what you want. The next we talked about was building and managing your dream team. How do you create a dream team? And how do you maintain that team so that you can achieve those high quality standards? And that day I told you guys about my story about how um, I didn't think it was possible with the team I had at one point. I was just like, oh, they're just not capable, they can't do it. And I just kind of realized within myself that it was me holding them back, not so much them. So. It is achievable. I know we think we can't pay enough, there, but you guys, it is. If you if you're disagree with me and you haven't watched my other videos, you gotta watch the third video on creating your dream team. And um, yesterday we talked about structure, procedures, policies. Why is a business structure so important? Why is it important to have policies and procedures that you're following all the time and having systems that can be duplicatable? Uh, today is going to be quality standards. And um, Brandy will be here in just a second. We're just gonna talk about like the transition my center has gone through. And earlier this week, I was telling you guys how about years ago, before I had all of this put in place, we had joined the QRIS system and I thought I had a high quality program. I thought that I was just stellar, right? Because I was basing it on my own personal knowledge. And, and I do have a lot of knowledge. I mean, I, I have a degree in early childhood education. I have a degree in human development and family studies. I have a degree in neurological psychology. So I do have a lot of 
you know, it wasn't just um, me just making stuff up. I, I do have an educated background, but there were pieces missing to the puzzle. And so we signed up for the QRAS program or the Nevada um, Stars, Silver State Stars program. And our first round through the Nevada Silver State Stars, we came in at a two star level, which was devastating to me. I, <laughs> the people that work in Nevada know I was not a happy girl. Uh, but I can tell you guys about how our, we had a paradigm shift, right? And our entire center had to shift for us to get to the level we're at now. And it, it was hard. And there were times where I just thought that my curious coach was crazy. I just thought this isn't achievable, that she's unrealistic. There was times where I just kind of rolled my eyes and I'm sure the poor coaches out there get this all the time where it's just like, oh no, 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 I'm doing just fine. But when we started making the transition that I, I talked to you guys a little bit about the turning point for us on Wednesday, when my center really started to transform. And I just, just I don't know when I decided, but at one point I decided, okay, we're just gonna do this, right? And we started to really just be all in. And I can tell you when we did, it was a game changer for my center. Not only in the fact that my centers, honestly, the classrooms are easier to run now, but that's when I got to the point where um, we have people fighting to get in our center. That's why I have a 300 child wait list at this time. So as you're popping on, say hi so we know you're there. And Brady, you can come in now if you're ready. But that was really, I think, the game changer for us was changing and really prioritizing that quality. <laughs> and so that was a, a huge one for us. Hi. <coughs> Sorry, guys. She's drinking vodka? Yes. that's It's my <laughs> chia seed. I don't know. You can't even see the chia seed. Looks like vodka and lemonade. Does it? <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a vodka lemonade in my entire life. <laughs> but... Um, so anyway, this is Brandy. She is my director. I talk about her all the time. So you guys know, have heard about her before. I've been talking all week. I've mentioned her. So we're going to talk a little bit because Brandy was here before me, mm -hmm. before I bought Zoom. She was actually here. You were the assistant director, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So she was the assistant director before I came in. So she has seen Zoom around go through three different stages. She saw like from the first owner who had no experience, no background in ECE, to when I took over where I did have experience and I had background, so it was a, a, bit, a bit better, but I really, I needed to get to that next stage too. And then she's been with me through the transformation that I've gone through, uh, what I've been telling you guys about from that struggling center where, you know, I was almost bankrupt to just checking out completely to now where we are today. So that's what we're gonna talk about is that transformation we've gone through and how it has affected the center. So Brady, when you worked, like for, let's talk about the transition first. Because oh, right. you worked for the first owner, mm -hmm. and I'm sure at the time you guys thought that you were putting out stellar, stellar quality, <laughs> right? Yeah. So after the first owner, you thought it was great quality, mm -hmm. right? And right. then I came in, Right. And I changed a lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean philosophically, I, can, I pretty much changed everything. Right. So you held us to standards. I did, right, yes. right. So before you guys, it weren't held to standards. It was babysitting. Oh, uh, it was like babysitting. It was just um, there was no curriculum. There was curriculum, but it wasn't developmentally appropriate. So it wasn't anything right. beneficial to the children. Uh, we were just kind of going with the flow and just making sure all the kids left on a daily basis in one piece. In one piece. Yeah. But you guys didn't know any better. And no, that was the main didn't. thing. We didn't you just didn't know. know. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's the thing to understand is that at the time when I came in, they thought they were a high quality center. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you, the facility is gorgeous, right? Well, so before I took over Zoom, I was at a different building. And um, when we, I had the, I, I had a, the building built, but I did it sparingly with a limited budget. This building that we're in now, they spent what, 1.5 million? Yeah, it was, I think lot. it was a little bit more than 1.5 mm -hmm. million on. And this, by the way, was 12 years ago. So 12 years ago, $1.5 million, gorgeous, amazing facility. So 
it shows great. So tours and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny because when I owned the other center and I remember talking to one of my teachers who had come over here and toured during your guys' open house. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, um, oh, we're going to lose all our families to them because it's beautiful. It's like the Taj Mahal of <laughs> child care centers. And I just said to her, you know what? At first we probably will, but mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it because once they see through the fluff, they'll be back. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. 18 mm -hmm. months later, your owner was coming to me at the time mm -hmm. because she couldn't make without it anymore. Without me knowing. Without you knowing. <laughs> And coming to me at the time because she couldn't stay in business right. and have basically asking me to take over the center. So that's where one of the examples of work quality is so important. I mean, you can have this gorgeous center with all the money put mm -hmm. into it, but without that structure, it just was falling yeah. apart pretty quickly too, right? Right. So now when I came in, I made, I mean, I even changed the classrooms because like the way you guys had it set up, it was very sparse. Mm -hmm. And then everything was shoved up against walls. Right. So I taught you guys basically. Because we thought open spaces where the children could run around was a good thing. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so then I kind of taught you guys like, no, this is how it. But then mm -hmm. we went through a, another transformation, right? Like mm -hmm. all of us together as a team. Yes. So let's talk about how that has transformed Zoo now. And I think that was really just the big. From training. when we first merged the two centers or when we first took on curious. curious yep yeah so i think at that point we were comfortable right within ourselves right. Mm -hmm. and so i guess we've gone through three zooming around has gone through three layers of quality right where we had the first zooming around with the first owner and then i took it over and i brought the quality to a second level mm -hmm. but then we got help right we brought in right. the curious system we brought in the silver state stars And we had an extraordinary coach mm -hmm. who helped us. Um, and at the same hi, June, time, if you're out there, <laughs> actually Tracy's on. I think oh, Tracy hi, is on. So I think she was on. I thought I saw her pop up. But um, so that was like, a, and then I started working with Christine at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the coaching that we brought into Zoom to Zoom is, is just huge turnaround mm -hmm. right yeah so what do you think is different now because i brought in structure and i brought in a lot of but what was it you think that we really honed in on i think it was because when we started curious we basically we accepted that we had to just pretty much start over right we had to give the staff the mindset that this is how we're doing things now forget how we did things in the past that's true yep and i think that i'm not gonna lie the large grant money that we brought in yes and then we held the staff accountable for the right. materials that came right. in we insisted they teach the children how to right use the materials and i think after a while and the coaching the coaching not only from qis but from us as managers yes um the one-on-one -on -one coaching the classroom meetings just holding their hands basically and right, doing it right. together yep. and building that whole team structure again lets them feel more comfortable that right. this is better quality. So we always knew what the quality should look like. Mm -hmm. I think it was more um, part of the problem I think we were having is pivoting into that qual like, um, oh, I guess pivoting into the accountability portion in the classrooms and coaching them. Mm -hmm. Because coaching. even though we were new and we had the knowledge, our staff didn't. Right. And we weren't doing a good job of relaying that mm -hmm. knowledge to them. And I think that was the key. Right. And and you and I used to get frustrated all the time or, you know, and I talked to you guys on Wednesday about how, uh, well, one of, I, I didn't tell you guys this, but one of our key phrases used to be like, oh, these women, <laughs> these women, you know, we would come in and talk to each other, these women, they all need to go. We just need to start over again. And that's something we used to say all the time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we realized that it wasn't these women. It was how we were managing. How we were managing. Yeah. So you have to, I had to change that. I used to um, be very overbearing and I would go in a classroom and bark. Uh, right. what we expected and nobody responds to that and well they did but not in a good way and um so i had to change myself and i took a lot of coaching from our coach she would tell me how to explain things to them that was more beneficial and then so now i just kind of i hate the phrase hold their hand but right that's what i do i hold their hand and they coach me and i take it on to them and it's just, it's just yeah a ripple coaching. effect and right it's 
I love Curious. I love it to death, and I love the fact that the classrooms are well managed now. And at first, I didn't like Curious because they would say your group size can only be eight with two teachers. And financially, I'm like, how are we gonna yes. do that? Yep. How are we gonna handle that? But you can. You it, can do it. You yeah. can do it, and it's phenomenal to see the teachers so much less stressed out. Right. The children are actually well engaged. They get the interactions that they're looking right. for and craving and it's just it's I easier it to be honest it's so is. much easier and, and that's the thing is when you're going through it you think it's going to be harder mm -hmm. right we you thought think. it was going to be harder as an owner i thought i can't afford to do this this right. is going to be so expensive there's mm -hmm. no way like how am i going to do these ratios it's unrealistic yeah but in reality making that shift actually made us more profitable. Mm -hmm. So that is, I think, a really important thing to know. We can afford paper towels again. <laughs> yes, we can afford paper towels and we're not scrambling for toilet paper. Mm -hmm. Just that was a reality that I didn't, re because you look at it on paper and just like, what do you mean I have to, you know, and I've talked before about how my infant room is licensed for 21. Well, according to QRES, we could only take eight. eight. <laughs> And it's a wonderful ratio. And we ratio. did have 21. When we did. When we first merged, we, we did. had 21. And we thought we were awesome. Awesome. We did. Because we could rock three to four babies at a time. Yep. No. Right. That is not quality. <laughs> it's not. No. So ironically, we now are more profitable at mm -hmm. only taking eight babies mm -hmm. with the one to four ratio than we were at 21 with a one to six ratio. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't sound logical. But what it's actually done for us is we charge more now, honestly. Mm -hmm. we, we can charge her now. It's a, people fight to get in our center now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have the big wait list. So staff retention. Yep, staff, staff retention. retention is phenomenal. Parents are afraid mm -hmm. to leave us mm -hmm. because they're afraid to lose their spot. Their spot. Uh, last year, I did a significant rate increase that was pretty high. And what the only parent that you had come to you... Just said, well, are you? Did you ask her? Or did she just come to you and say, what she am I going to do about it? She came to me and said, what, 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 what can I what do can about it? What can I do it? about it? It is what it is. So. Right. And that's the thing. That's like the kind of you know where we can make mm -hmm. the you know, why we're more profitable because of it. Right. Because the parents basically are like, if they want, they they understand that now. Mm -hmm. They know that it's hard to get in here, so they just kind of have that idea, like, well, what can I do? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I literally what I raise our prices by $10 per child, right? Mm -hmm. Per week. And think about yeah. that for like multiple children. It's a significant amount of money. And we got rid of, we used to give like a 10% multiple discount and then we'd give them, um, there was another discount on top of, oh, if they paid monthly. So now we cut that back. They only get one, one right. or the other. Yeah. So, so, and they're fine with that. We raised the rates and we cut back discounts. Mm -hmm. And so there, for some families, it was a significant increase. But we did not lose a single, well, one family put a notice and then they took it back, mm -hmm. I remember? And then another family was just like, well, what can what we can do? We that do? was all the pushback we got. And it is a result of that quality. And I have mm -hmm. to say what Curious has really done for us is it holds us accountable. Absolutely. Which I think accountability is so important, right? It just having somebody overseeing you, holding you accountable, mm -hmm. And also, um, it also taught us that we have to coach, right? You have to. You have to you coach. Have to. And you have to get in those classrooms yeah. and show them how to do it because it doesn't wrap it. Well, yeah. and I talked to you guys yesterday. Um, maybe I did. I think it was somebody else. Sorry. I, <laughs> there's a statistic. I took a class once, and I think it was actually through QRIS. And they there was a statistic that they put up that just blew my mind about... Um, only 15% of what somebody learns in a training is actually applied and remembered. Mm -hmm. If you do that training with coaching, it goes up to 90%. Mm -hmm. If you do coaching without training, you're still at about an 80% implementation and, re and um, retention. So coaching is so yeah. much more valuable than training. I think you can training. hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. you, that you accountability. Say, we talked about this. And it's hands on. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely. actually showing them mm -hmm. that you're going through the motions together. And they know exactly. They know exactly why you need 10 Legos, but three different sets. Yep. Or not Legos, I'm sorry, blocks. 10 blocks and three different types of blocks. Right. So whether it be textured or uh, hollow versus hard. Right. Anything right. like that. Then they get to know why. Why right. we need those. Yep. And what purpose it serves. And it actually thins out a lot of the classrooms from 
clunky yes. materials or yeah. stuff you thought is stellar, but it's, it's not, not needed. Yeah. It's not needed at all. It's so. a, and I think that's a good point, too, that you make is before we would have put those blocks in there, right? Mm -hmm. But we wouldn't explain why. Right. We just arrange the classrooms, we set them up, and the teachers would see that they have three types of blocks, but they had no idea why right. they had three blo yeah, types and of blocks. And they, they didn't understand that you can implement math with blocks if you sit down with the child and say, let's help. Right. Let's see how tall we can build this tower, one, yep. two, three. And they're like, oh, oh they just learned math. Right. They didn't understand how to integrate. Yeah. yeah. So that sounds easy, but to a lot of teachers, they don't understand it. Right, right. So, and that's where I think it was just really valuable. Mm -hmm. That's what really made us transition to understand that we need to coach. Mm -hmm. We don't just need, because we were doing mm -hmm. a ton of, we've always done a ton of trainings. Tons. And yeah. I think you and I also used to just, we've delivered all these trainings. Why aren't they doing it? Why aren't they doing it? Mm -hmm. Why? And we used to just feel like hamsters on a wheel, mm -hmm. again, where we just, we would, we just oh yeah it was frustrating i mean back then we did like quarterly saturday trainings yeah. and then we were doing way more training than than we do now mm -hmm. and it, it we weren't seeing any results and i know for me personally i'm putting on these trainings i was just getting so frustrated you give up your saturdays yes yeah. yeah and then also developing the trainings and all the work that goes into it mm -hmm. and then we saw nothing come out of it mm -hmm. so when we did that shift from training to coaching and and we still do trainings of course but mm -hmm. we do more coaching coaching mm -hmm. for sure than training and i think when we did that shift that's really what which mm -hmm. is what qrs taught us that right. we had to do the shift and i think what i enjoy too is when we actually hire new employees and you just teach them right from the from start, the start. Yep. what qrs the yep. quality standards they hold and then there's never any question yeah. there's never any power struggles there's not that old school teacher yes. mentality so it's right like, come assessment time it's a everything because just it's just normal place, to them right mm -hmm. well and you bring up a good point because before we didn't even have new hire training right we didn't do new hire we didn't have any kind of structure or organization Welcome to the classroom good luck. there you go bye bye <laughs> we just threw them in there and it was just like there you go bye let's feed them to the sharks you know right. it was that was it and yeah it was pretty much but now um we had no well and it, the, we didn't even have policies and procedures back then we yeah. didn't play i thought we did right but we didn't even have policies and procedures. We had an employee handbook. We had an employee yeah. handbook. So yeah. now we have actual policies, procedures that we train on. Mm -hmm. And that has really, and that was also working with my coach. That was a huge, right. because she's the one who got us, you know. So at the same time as we were working with the QRIS coach, we were working with my uh, business coach. And it just all came together. Came together. And Beautifully. In, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it just came together and fell into play. She loves to train. I love to coach. Yep. So it works I out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I love to train. I don't like coaching so much. She likes. I like seeing the light bulbs go yeah. off. Well, I, do. I guess I do. I just, mm -hmm. when I go into the classroom, I love being in the classroom, but I tend to just take over. Yeah. I was going to say she's a little controlling. I, yeah, I am. I'm very controlling. It yeah. took me 11 years to turn the reins over to her. <laughs> so. <laughs> I knew she would one day, though. That's you why knew, I stuck yeah. around for 11 years. Well, I gave you early. I, know. Oh, I yeah. gave her my other center mm -hmm. when we had a second center. I gave her that one. It was this one that I had a hard time giving up. <laughs> but um, And now, how are you? You're going to be the one to have to give it up for our next center. I know, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I yes. like it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get another center yes. coming up. And then Brandy is going to be more of our regional director, where she's going to oversee all our directors. And right now we have... Let's see, all together we have like three in training kind of, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have one officially in training to become a director and then two that know they're raising up the ladder to yeah. become our next directors. That way they're all learning here at Zuin. And uh, one of the things I've been telling you guys, the reason that processes, structure is so important is because you want to be duplicatable. Mm -hmm. And we've created a system here at Zuin now where we can duplicate that. Mm -hmm. Brandy will be able to take our trainings and everything, go to the next center, we'll have the directors already trained and ready, and then she'll just be able to oversee all the centers. So that's why it's so important to have that structure, procedures, and the quality though. You need to have that quality in place and it needs to be a procedure and it needs to be official. Hi, Christine. Christine just hopped on, I see her. <laughs> We're just talking about you, you just missed it. <laughs> So that was, Christine, you guys don't know, she is my business coach who basically taught me the importance of having these procedures and how important that quality, it is to quality to have written, documented 
procedures that we also train on. Because mm -hmm. at first I wrote the procedures and then they were just in writing. Right. And nobody read them. Mm -hmm. And nobody did anything <laughs> with them. So then we realized like, okay, now we need to figure out a way to really implement them and make them come alive. And mm -hmm. now that we've accomplished that, we're doing fantastic and ready right. for our next center. Yeah. Again. So. Because once your classrooms are all running smoothly, you get bored. What you do? You got to yeah. have to get a new challenge. Right. <laughs> got to find a new challenge. Yeah. So, so and then also you guys, I've been talking to you earlier this week about how Brandy does coach directors. Mm -hmm. So I mainly coach owners. If you have a director that needs coaching, Brandy does coach directors. Mm -hmm. So that is something if you want uh, to learn her systems. I was telling you guys too that it's a, definitely a point where the student has surpassed the teacher and that she's a much better coach than I ever was. <laughs> So that's part of the reason I have her teach on the coaching because she does a much better job. Mm -hmm. So let's see, Christine, Christine says, you guys rock. Well, yes, <laughs> thanks to you now. You. We've learned so much from you and we were <laughs> talking about how much, yes, keep the train and moving forward. Absolutely, keep mm -hmm. the train moving forward, keep growing. And I, I have to tell you guys, I mean, Christine and I were talking a couple weeks ago how, about how what, five or six years ago, I was done. Mm -hmm. I wanted to sell. I, when I first hired Christine, um, it, I had told her that one of my goals was just to get Zoo to a place where I could sell it because I couldn't, I just didn't think I could handle it. And Christine really helped, like just through the coaching, through QRIS and the help with, from Christine, now I was able to fall in love with my business again. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point where I don't hate being here anymore. <laughs> and I love it again. Like I, my, it brought my mm -hmm. passion back, getting those pieces in place that brought us, uh, instead of Zoom controlling me, I was able to control, be in control, mm -hmm. don't you think? Yeah. And then also learning how to delegate, right? right. Because before I would not, and, and before, I got to say too, before Brady was my assistant director, I had other assistant directors. And at that time I worked 12 <laughs> to 14 hour days. Mm -hmm. So just developing that staff and having the right staff is key mm -hmm. in order to being able to let go. And just freeing yourself because then I I was here open to close. I, I know was, I'm doing my job when she's not here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, and that's pretty much what my husband mm -hmm. says, right? Yep. That's what he, and, and he had to kind of teach me that too. He did mm -hmm. teach me like, why do you have the staff? Why are you paying these people if you're always gonna be there doing the job? And he used to say that to me all the time for years. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I finally learned how with, between Christine's help and our QRS coach's help, we finally learned that balance. I learned how to give up the control, but I did have to have somebody I could trust. Right. I did have to have somebody that I knew that if I wasn't here, everything was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So that is a bit, you know, and that's why I, before I even teach on this, I talked to you guys about your dream team. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I want you guys to understand is Brandy's been with me now for 11 years, right? So important to note, she was here. I just didn't put the work into her that I needed to, to develop what I needed. So that is, was me, not her, right? Because she could have been my director three years, years after I came in, right? But I didn't do my part to make her get to that level. So that's where, and that's something that my business coach had really helped me with to understand is like how I needed to learn how to duplicate myself. Mm -hmm. And that's something now Brandy knows and will not take 11 years <laughs> like I did. To no, because I'm retiring in 10. Uh, right, so. so. <laughs> we don't have 11 years. <laughs> so that was something that like I had to learn and that Christine really coached me through is just, you know, you just, you've got to learn how to delegate. And I know I used to think I knew how to delegate, but I've come to realize I didn't. I assigned jobs mm -hmm. and I over, I was always overlooking it, nitpicking, but delegation is really the ability to give someone the job and just let it go mm -hmm. and understand that they're not going to do it the way you did it, but that's, that's okay. okay. That's okay. As long as the results are good, right? They may not even be the same results that you would have gotten. They might be better than what you Sometimes would have done. Sometimes they're better. Sometimes they're better, right? Sometimes, you know, and, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be done. And, you know, for people, a lot of us are controlling and it was very hard for me. Like all of us are controlling. Are controlling. All yeah. Of us we're all pretty much controlling. We're female. Yeah. So <laughs> most of us, most of my, well, my husband is too, so I can't just say, but, um, I think Your it was female? very controlling. Oh. He's very controlling. <laughs> So it's just, so it just means. Let's see. Chris loves your mindset, Brandy. You are a very important part of the future <laughs> success of everything. Coming. Yes, she is. Yeah. Thank you. So that was something that we really just needed to. 
I needed to understand like, and I told you guys the day I did my dream team tra training that most of my team today is the same team it was then. Mm -hmm. It wasn't them, it was me. So, and I, I told you guys from the get go when you first logged on that day that I know a lot of you are thinking a dream team is impossible mm -hmm. with what we pay, but it really is. If we become the leaders we need to be, mm -hmm. we can create that dream team. And you just, you know, and there are some that you will need to let go of and say goodbye to, and that's okay. Totally okay. But there's a lot of them who are still in your center right now that when you nurture them, mm -hmm. they will get you to that high quality standards. And, you know, it just, it's all within us. They just so, have to be willing. If they're willing to mm -hmm. learn and change and yep. grow with the company. And if they buy into your go. vision. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was telling them earlier this week how you remind me, like when I start getting a little burnt out and just irritable irritable how you remind me of my vision and yeah. you or you'll tell me like okay you're not prioritizing the queen that's right and protect the queen bee. protect our queen mm -hmm. and that always bringing us back to remain the superpowers oh my husband's on oh hi Ann. ronnie <laughs> says the team uh, uh, best team we could ask for right there over 10 years together oh you're so sweet so Getting back, I hope you guys have your worksheets, but focusing on that, um, let me get on the right page. Sorry, I just turned it. I was on the right page, and then I turned it. So why are research-based quality standards so important? Because that really is the difference, don't mm -hmm. you think? It, it really was the turning point. I think before we were struggling for enrollment, but we didn't understand that we had a revolving door because of our practices, right? because we weren't doing the high quality standards. I think research-based is important because otherwise you really don't know mm -hmm. if you have quality, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that the research is just tried and true. They've gone through centers, seen the outcomes from these children. They've seen what best practices are. So this it's not just an educated guess. This is reality. This is data proven that it is what is best. Hi, Jessica. Thank you for joining us. Um, so that's where, why quality, if you really want your center to get to that next level, so very important. Hi, Marissa. Um, so, so very important to get to that quality. That's where you get your revolving door stops. You stop getting mm -hmm. that children leaving you all the time right. and you get people and the word of mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Like the referrals just take on a whole new life to the point that you don't even really need to advertise, right. which... We still do because I'm huge on branding, mm -hmm. but that's more just for our brand staying alive within the city and mm -hmm. just... Um, so they don't go down the street. Exactly, yeah. And it's kind of ironic because my son teases me. I, every year I buy a banner at the high school and he always teases me about, well, mom, what are you trying to do? Get the teen moms? I'm like, no, I just want five years from now when they're having children, my center's logo is so ingrained in their head that I will be the first thing that they think about. Right. Zooming around will be the first center they think about because they've seen my logo everywhere, right? So mm -hmm. that's why it's so important. So to me, that's basically not because I'm <laughs> soliciting teen moms. Um, I don't know. Self-isolation. You don't know what's going to happen no, I know. in nine months. <laughs> now we're kind of, that. that's one of the benefits of COVID. We're hoping for a lot of future business. So, um, so yeah, the outcomes from having high research-based standards and holding yourself accountable, right? Not just in terms of like what QRES does in the classroom, mm -hmm. but also as administrators, right. which is why I have my coach because she holds me accountable. And um, I tell her all the time that she's like my Jiminy Cricket. And ironically, I was talking to someone this morning who also, Christine's her coach too. So there's two of us talking mm -hmm. and we were both laughing about how like when we go to spend something, both of us were saying like, we always think, oh no, what's Christine going to say if we buy that? <laughs> so it's just, you know, that accountability is so good and important right. for us. So that's where you know, staying with the curious system has right. been so nice because even though we achieved that goal mm -hmm. and we are at the level, you know, the highest level pretty much where we score that we can be, we want to keep it going. We right. want to this to be our reality forever, which is why it's so important to stay within those quality programs because otherwise it's just too easy to get lazy and fall back, right? right? Well, and that's another thing I like about Curious is because there is a portion there for the admin and they like the like all the family involvement. So mm -hmm. I think once we started with Curious, we got a lot of family involvement. We have a lot more oh, family so events. Much more. So the community 
too knows about that's true who we are right the annual birthday bash the right um open houses well and even just our quality committee absolutely yeah yeah where we have a quality committee which is made up of parents staff and then us we go every once a month we meet and just to, and really we call it our quality accountability group, which they, and that's what they are. They, you know, sometimes they tell us, mm-hmm. like one of my dads told me I need to maintain the parking lot better. I mean, it, it is quality, right? So mm-hmm. it's just, we would have never done that before QRIS. You'd be surprised what dads have to say. It's amazing. The, dads, the input, yeah. amazing. Like some really of the changes, good. the permanent changes mm-hmm. we've made within our programs have come from some of the dads mm-hmm. that come to that meeting, yeah. which is pretty, pretty cool. Awesome. It's pretty cool. Um, and then steps you can take to implement quality, right? What I would suggest you guys is you do, this isn't something you can do within yourself. So you, Christine says, never get too big for your britches. Absolutely. Right. So I have you to keep me accountable, Christine. And we also have those parents that come in to keep us accountable and we have the curious system. Mm -hmm. So Christine helps me to stay accountable when it comes to my finances, curious, makes sure that we stay accountable as a high quality quality program, right? And so that's where those accountability systems are so important. And it's, you know, you could buy the books, you could do all the stuff, but on your own, I don't know about you, but I don't have the discipline. Right. I wouldn't keep up with it. It's just too easy to fall backwards. And that's why coaching is so Mm -hmm. very important. So that's why it's just so vital to have a good business coach on your team or just, you know, somebody who's keeping you accountable and also guiding you because there's stuff that we don't know, right? Mm And there's just things to help us get to that next level. So that is um, pretty much what I have for you guys today. And again, I am doing consultations. If anyone wants to join my coaching program or my membership program, I am doing consultations tomorrow. I am booked up for today, but I do have some openings for tomorrow and for Monday. And also Monday, I do have my guest that is coming on. So make sure that you tune in Monday at 4 p.m. for our bonus session. And it's actually going to be Christina Richmond, which is Christine's business partner. She's going to be on with me on Monday. So again, if you guys want a consultation, I will be available tomorrow. So just send me a message or let me know in the comments and I can schedule time. So thank you, Brandy. You're welcome. Thank you. And everybody, I hope you guys have a fantastic evening. Good night.